And here we go. Let's go. It's been a while. Episode four, Chicklets Game Notes, uh, back rolling again. We've got Merles. We've got G. Uh, it's been a, it's been a month uh, since we last met. Lots has happened in hockey. Uh, lots has happened with you guys. I'm I'm probably not going to lie. I heard the boys talking on the pod like it took them forever to recover from Boston. Like I'm probably still not fully recovered, Merles. I don't know. Are you? You had the hardest travel ever. What, what's up with you right now, Merles? Good to be back. Good to see you. Studio's looking sick. By the way, no, thank you. I'm I'm ready. I'm I'm fully recovered. I've been back in Sweden 20 days. I've I've kept a count. I've had four beers and five glasses of red wine the entire time. I joined a gym. I've been on the treadmill. I think I'm down 10, 12 pounds already. I'm like I saw a number in Boston at that hotel. I, if somebody can go to the Intercontinental and find out if that scale was right. I, it was a number I, sh- I should never see when I stand on it. It threw me into a panic and I've been clean living since and I'm ready for Florida. As you see, I'm already I'm in my bathing suit recording the short sleeve shirt and uh, I leave I leave on uh, on Wednesday. And well, I guess it's coming out Thursday, so I don't know oh. if this is going to make any sense, but I'm ready for Florida besides no tan. Merles, I got to say that's mm-hmm. tough to hear. This episode four is is uh, our presenting sponsor is Big Deal Brew. So, you know, Big Deal Brewing, and you're only nursing a couple drinks here and there. Uh, I see the box up behind you. You're mm-hmm. probably low. You probably got to get a care package to bring back. Am I right? Correct. I'm bringing a, an extra carry on bag that I'm going to load up with uh, Big Deal Brew and Pink Whitney, and then shove it under the plane home and uh, sneak it back into the country because I've had to use them for rally beers. It's unreal how the big deal brew works for rallying. My team's down, slam one, boom, they score. Well, me and Merle's, gee, me and Merle's been texting. Like, we've been rolling. We'll get into it in the pod, but, like, we've been talking lots about the Jets and, like, even some of these other, you know, things that Merle's has going on. He's posting content, riding a GT snow racer, which I love that. That brings me back to my childhood. Didn't Brett Hall have a GT snow racer that came out back in the day? It was sick when I was a kid. He was on the box anyway. Um, but, like, we were we were hard on the Jets, and he couldn't even do rally. He couldn't even do rally beer because he's, like, saving rally beers uh, through the month because the Bills were playing. Now Then they were out, and... You know, of course, but he's 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 running low. Old, old Merle's hurting with the bills. Um, but gee, you got to hook him up. What have you been up to? I know you. This week's crazy for you, G. Crazy. Fill us in. It's been a crazy week. I actually have still haven't slept last night from editing the pod, so it's been a wow. long night. But I'm uh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready for Fort Lauderdale. Celebrating the big three O boys when we get down there. Turning wow. thirty this weekend, so I'm uh, I'm excited oh. for that. It's it's ironic how my birthday always lines up with the NHL All Star mm-hmm. Game. Last year it was in Vegas. Mm-hmm. This year it's in Liquordale. Wow, it sucks for me, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see you guys. There's no place I'd rather be than Lauderdale NHL All Star Game with my boys for the thirtieth birthday. Yeah, well, I had uh, I had the big four zero at the start of the year. November kind of celebrated early when you guys were in town with the whole uh, becoming an American citizen. If you guys remember that big gong show that we had, uh, which was absolutely awesome. Like that, like this year has been a whirlwind for me too. G. So three is a big number, bud. And then Witt's right one. after me. And then I think Witt's like 13 days after me almost. And he, he turns the big four Oh, Ooh. Big, so he's joining the club. Big four yeah. old Merles. Where are you at right now? What are you, 43? Wait, we don't need to discuss that, but I, I, I celebrated my 40th down in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, I had a time down there. I, it was my 40th. I had retired from hockey. I was getting married. I was having a kid. So uh, I blew it out for six or seven days down there, and I haven't been back since, so I'm pretty excited for this trip. Well, speaking of birthdays, yeah, that'll be good. It'll be good to be with all the boys. Good, you know, like it'll it, it's awesome. Gee, you gotta you gotta really just get you know, Merle's. I know you pour the pour the pink Whitney nips to them, right? You're just gonna be <laughs> throwing them out of your little kangaroo pouch. That's the king of pink Whitney nips, right there. Is, is once, the once we get through once we get through all these interviews and sandbaggers, <laughs> you can pour as many oh. pink Whitney nips down my throat as you want. Buddy. And big deal, Bruce. Yeah, get yeah. You're gonna have to have a blowout. That's the big thing. When you work that hard, you gotta have a massive oh, blowout yeah. gong show with the boys. By the way, I like awesome interviews lined up while you guys are there. I'm so looking forward to it. Awesome players, uh, great guys. You guys have lined up a star-studded thing. 
Uh, I'm going to be going to uh, Mark Recchi's birthday. Mark Recchi, of course, came to our live show in Pittsburgh, the Hall of Famer. He turns 55, 55, stay alive. Of course, the speed limit, uh, um, you know, when you're riding the bus, when the bus is going a little slower which is a great gas is on the right bussy. Yeah. Gas is on the right bussy. When you're riding the bus <laughs> and you're going 55, stay alive. There's nothing worse than worse than extending a trip like that. But uh, I got that coming up in the next week, boys. And I know I want to get into this with you guys, especially Merle's Merle's talk to me, bud. Talk to me. Right. Quebec yep, I know. Wait, tournament wait, wait. next week. We're leaving on Wednesday and I'm so looking forward to this. I need a full what to do. Everyone's going to be listening to this. Everyone listens. I get yelled at at every game. I'm working the post game show for the Pens. I'm on the concourse pretty much. People are yelling, game notes, chiplets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just crazy insanity. So, Merles, hit, hit us up with yeah. all, all these like, you know, crazy, horny for hockey, youth hockey, hockey parents. What are we going to do? So, so, the people that don't know, this is the Quebec Pee Wee tournament. You've heard Whitney had won, has won it. It's uh, it's over a hundred teams. They all go up to Quebec from all over the world. Um, you play in the in the Colise- Well, when I played, it was the Colise- the Nordiques rank. Now I think the Rem parts. It's like the so Videotron it's- Center, Merles. NHL size rank. You'll yep. have sellout crowds. They have their own song. Like Army. By the end of this week, it will you'll you'll be singing it for the next month. It- Pee wee, pee wee, pee wee, pee wee, pee wee. Viva la pee wee wee carnival and. And they play oh, it every I game. You're keep going. That's I, I can't. Maybe we can add it in there after the real version. <laughs> but I had a little cassette tape. We 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 bought at the gift shop after, and um, we went there. We had hockey cards. You could you would trade the hockey cards underneath the, the in the bowels of the rink with the other team. I tried to I tried to sell uh, one of my buddies McMonagle his card for five bucks. I wanted to buy another poutine. He turned me down. Um, it's it's amazing time. I'm gonna put a blog together for the parents guide for this because. There's so much you need to know. So are we saving it for the are we saving it for the for the for the blog? Or are you gonna give me like uh, I'll, one I'll thing I one... need to do as a dad? Yeah, like give uh, me the, one the, cool all thing. All right. Yeah, the very first thing you need to do, you boom, you check into the hotel, you get out in the downtown because your kid's gonna bill it, right? Yep. Okay, so you get right out into the town in the old town. They sell these walking sticks because it's you know, it's all <laughs> snow and ice and ice sculptures, but there's a little trick. There's a little snowman head on the top, Bonhomme or something. His name is Bonhomme. You, Bonhomme. So you yep. unscrew, you unscrew the head, and it's empty. And you go oh. around, and they fill it up with like hot wine. It's like a, it's like a mix of hot wine and booze called Caribou. So you put that in, and you're walking around, you're sipping on that. You finish it, you get to the next spot, fill it up again, and you just cruise around town all night, baby. What an actual parent hack right there! That is the first thing I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, I I, it's incredible. I let me see if I got a picture. Just caning around. Didn't R.A. have a cane for a while? We just caning <laughs> around, sipping out of a cane. You see it on here. But, uh, Those guys from Dumb see it Dumber. on there. Like, it's this guy, and you unscrew oh, the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. My yeah. dad still has his in the basement back home in <laughs> Troy. That's what, uh, oh, but so you're going to ask- have a blast. It's the best time. It's going to be your kid's best time of his life. It's going to be your best tournament you ever been to. You're going to have a blast. So, so let me ask you guys this. In. Let me ask you guys this. Thank you, uh, Merles, for, you know, that's probably the biggest hack right off the bat that you've got to do. Can you imagine seeing like, you know, 20 hockey dads just all walking with canes? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. yeah that, tip, everyone will be walking the pros. The Yeah. Leave it to the pros. Uh, Army, what, uh, what are you looking forward to most? Well, I got to ask you this. I'm looking forward to the Carnival. Is that what you call it, Merles? The Carnival? Yeah, that's where like the tournament's kind of. Yeah, it's it's like based all around that with the sculptures and all. There's a ton of events going on. The Pee Wee tournament just one small event of it. Yeah, the hockey will be cool for the experience for my kid. And, and you know, I'm going to be down there with my wife and our other kids. And um, I'm looking forward, though, G, to, to doing some kind of Carnival events. Like, I think they have um, – you can do um, – what, what's it called? The the dog sledding. They have like dog sledding. They have all these different things you can do. Believe it or not, being from Saskatchewan, shout out Sasky. Look at me riding it, holding the flag. Uh, shout out to Sasky, the good people of Sasky. I've never snowmobiled before and I would love to snowmobile. I, I just never got a chance to do it. Never had a snowmobile. Um, didn't partake in any real winter sports other than hockey growing up as a kid. So that's something I'm looking forward to, like the kind of stuff away from hockey and the carnival stuff and the stuff you can do uh, while you're there. I got a question for you guys though, too. We have to take the bus ride from Pittsburgh to Quebec city, which is like, I think it's a 16 hour bus trip. We leave 
at night next week when we arrive in the morning we go right through the night now there's a rule on this thing i guess from the team is like no booze on the bus or something i don't know i don't get it like I'm breaking this rule, right? <laughs> you got to break this rule. Like, <laughs> no question about it. You got to break this like, rule. Like there's no chance I'm not not going to be boozing on this thing. You remember how stupid we were on like the buses in pro? <laughs> we would sit in the back and we'd like all start coughing like <clears throat> to yeah. crack the beer. <laughs> like think we're going to hide it from this coach. No, every coach played pro hockey. They're not idiots. But at the time you think you're being so smart. Like, ugh. That's so true. I, mean, you I, I don't know if they do that anymore. Are there beers on the bus anymore, Merles? I have a hard yeah. feeling thinking this. Yeah, no chance. No, green when you're interviewing guys in Florida, G, just throw that in there. Just like a quick little, hey, is there beers on the bus post game anymore? Biz has been asking questions like that, I feel like, for years to guys. And it's just everyone says no. I feel like that, that generation died with you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's a short trip to the airport post game. You know, you're like you're just going from the bus to the airport. It's like, you know, everyone gets like one beer. It's not like crazy. And it was kind of a cool tradition set up. They set it up. The trainers get it going. The visiting team, the home team trainers hook up the visiting team on the bus. It used to be kind of thing. But I, I think that's gone. But this bus ride is is going to be I might have to go buy one of those canes. You can like twist the top off of it <laughs> for the bus ride. Like, why has Army got a cane on the bus? Like, uh, <laughs> duh. You know, you got to come up with some yeah, that's, kind of that's tricks. The move. Yeah, fill it with big deal brew. Mm -hmm. Fill it with those bad boys. All right, boys. Uh, I love it. Great catching up. Episode four. Um, you know, we sit patiently and wait for this like every month. I get like anxiety leading up to it just because there's such a gap. G. Merles, I don't know how do you guys feel. I, you're, G, you're, you're a pro at this. This is your life. Me and Merles are like, just doing dad stuff, like trying to survive. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, we got to, you know, fill this all in. So, I mean, as we learned last week, though, being a dad is more than a full time job. You're catching mm -hmm. puke with your hands mm -hmm. and shit. Oh, I mean, yeah. if you guys, if you guys had any dad stories that have happened recently before we jump in here, mm -hmm. little I've been sesh. doing all, like fun stuff. It's been fun, like uh, going sleigh riding here. And it's actually good for the workout. And it's a little extra workout dragging her up and down the hill. So it's uh, it's been all fun here with the snow. Have in the snow is is great to go outside build snowmen snow forts i'm loving it right now merles is like a kid again <laughs> yeah. like just a kid again i love it merles you're just a kid at heart you're just a legend that's why everyone loves you that's why you're always around that's why you're the guy that we have to have you're like the manager ebr <laughs> master you've got like people just like following your every move just a god just content on a gt <laughs> snow racer um and and you know what guys i gotta say this i gotta start working out i know merles is saying he's building forts he's doing workouts he's not drinking as much he's being a beauty i heard on the pod that was just released this week as well uh biz is in in, in full workout mode feeling great clear positivity g you were getting ripped on a little bit yeah yeah I think, boys, I think uh, the day has finally come. And for the first time since high school hockey, I am going to hire a trainer. I think uh, I think the you day has it. finally come. So if you're if you're a, a trainer in the Hoboken, New Jersey area, which I think I might be moving to soon, Barstool Sportsbook, Merles. Oh, that's big news. That's big, big news. news. And uh, yeah, if you're a trainer, let me know, because I was watching the video the other day of the vlog from the Boston and I have no jawline. If you look, oh, tell just, me about it. I just, I, there's no. I used to have like a chin. It just goes neck right up to my cheek now. It's, it's terrible, <laughs> buddy. My neck is the same size as my head right now. Like a boa constrictor can even choke my neck out. I just like slide out of it. It just go right up. I have no chin. Just like schlank. You can't even put me in a headlock right now. I just pop out of it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable setup. I think you're right. I'll put out the call too. anyone in, in, in upper Pittsburgh area, Wexford, Cranberry area. If you're a personal trainer and you can help me out, I need a support team. I need help. I need motivation. I'm the same as you, G. I'm struggling for that. I can't bring myself to go play beer league at 11 o'clock at night. I can't bring myself to hit the gym. I got other guys that are like, come with me at 5 a.m. I'm like, me I'm not too. doing that. I just can't get myself to do it. I and know. I need I need someone who's going to go above and beyond, too. Like, I need the nutritionist. It can't just be yes. taking me to the gym for 45 minutes three times a week. I need yeah. someone who's who's grilling me about my coach. food. My Yeah, I need a life coach. <laughs> That's what I need. We need life coaches. <laughs> I do. I'm not committed like Busy Boy. I'm not committed like Busy's like, oh, I'm hiking. I got this regiment. I'm doing all this every day. I'm like, God, I just like, I got a lot of time in my day. I just can't bring myself to 
fully do it. I need like a crew. I need a life coach. You're right, G. So we're talking about the pod. We're talking about life choices, which brings us to our first segment of the show. Great introductions of the boys. Chicklets Chirps, uh, where we kind of look back at this month and some of the trends, some of the things you boys are talking about, which was workouts, which we just did um and 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 get into a bit and maybe some hot takes merles you got anything that you that you picked up on this uh past yeah. month with the boys yeah it wasn't so much on the chicklets but it was biz on tnt and he um he was trying to pronounce vecchio your old team in sweden Vecqua. Vecqua, and Hen- what Henrik Hank helped said. him out but it wasn't about that their first place in the in the whole league since he did that clip they're zero and two and they've scored one goal he completely mushed them like he does every NHL team. Now he's mushing the SHL teams. This is another level of mushness by the biz. So I'm going to ask him not to talk about them anymore because I kind of like that team. But uh, I thought that was pretty funny that they're playing tonight. So we'll see if they can break the biz curse. Why is he touching? Why is he going into the SHL ranks? Why is he? It was like, why would he go into your territory, Murr? You yeah, built a complete yeah. wall around that area. You're the SHL <laughs> god. You're the legend. Yeah, get off my cool like this. Yeah, get off his glug. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got, I, I, I found it interesting, and that's so funny. I mean, that either happens like you guys talk about something, chicklets bump, or you talk about something, and it seems to just go the other way. In this case, with, with Busy Boy, it went the other way. I, I find it super intriguing, um, Wit, who's been absolutely on fire, I feel, guys, and um, you know, you can tell me this, you guys know him so well, like Merle's, you guys are best buddies. G are with him all the time. See him every week. Like he, he, he has to get his golf fix. He has to travel. He's got, he, he's absolutely. And remember back to when he went after Canada at the airport at, at Pearson airport in Toronto, worst airport ever, worst place ever. And he, he's just a terror on the airlines. He is an absolute terror. Like no airline is safe with him on it. Uh, I think he likes <laughs> Delta. I think I get a I get a vibe that he's really into Delta, but they're not even safe. Like they better not even fuck up. They're going down. Wit will get them. Uh, a lot of wood to chop around the airline industry with with Wit, and he's like get he got guy got a guy almost like kicked off a flight by sneaking him booze. Like <laughs> he is absolutely the terror of the airlines. He's all over the place. Any airline, he flew Spirit, which is like. You know, like the bottom of the barrel grinder. It's like an old military plane seating and just like anything can happen on that thing. Uh, and then you got wit flying spirit. That's a combination we just have to see. But there's going to be a there's going to be a massive, uh, uh, you know, thing with with wit when he gets caught on a spirit airlines flight with the way he's operating with these airlines like he doesn't take any shit. Hey, Wit's a savage. When it no, comes and to I life. can't wait. You know something's going to happen this month. He's he's buzzing down to Florida, back home, then out to Arizona, back home. So oh. you know, some so that's just too much time in the air for something not to happen to the wit. Yeah, in the airport too long, and I kind of feel like too, like when there's lineups and stuff, like this is like hilarious with wit. He treats like the airports like he's standing in line at like Cowboys at the Stampede trying to get into the bar. Like it'll give you a hundred bucks if I can. Like he's just throwing money. He's throwing money at like TSA agents. He's throwing money at the but workers. But that's time oh, that's wit anywhere he goes. He's throwing money if he's at the movie theater and, and there's a, a line for popcorn. He's gonna throw an extra twenty to cut the line. That's that's just wit. That's what you do. You hundo people. I taught him that in Vegas. His first ever trip to Vegas after rookie year. I'm like, dude, just give the guy a hundo. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, just give him a hundo. He'll get us all in. He'll take care of us all night. Hundo everybody. Oh, my God. That's so wit. The hundo. What do you call hundo. it? He was ordering power aids or I guess body armor. But they didn't have body armor back then. But he's ordering them up to the room and just handing guys hundos. Like, here, thanks for the power aid. <laughs> like, just hundoing everybody. It was unbelievable. Just sliding hundos. I, I I slipped a few hundos back in the day at the Stampede to get in. You know, you get the back line. You got your NHL card. Remember that those NHL right, yeah. cards you used to have? You used to show those puppies, but you, I still had to pay to get in just because. But I got to the front of the line with the card. Then I paid the guy to get like 10 people in. And that's the ultimate move. So I, I find it hilarious that, you know, Wit's doing that at the air, trying to trying to grease the palms at the airport too, which is absolutely epic. And another thing, I, are you guys finding it amazing? I'm not a huge car guy. I know Busy went off on, on this car show. Gee, what was that car show called? I, I've seen it. Jackson. Barrett Jackson. Barrett Jackson car show. I've watched it on TV. It's wild. Some really nice cars and stuff. Like it's like an auction. So Biz went to it. But like, it, did he say his dream car is like a Bronco? 
or is it like a Jeep? Something he would want to get or something. Yeah, I think he said yeah. I think he said something along the lines of a car he would love to buy is a Bronco. One of those new Broncos, Bronco. I think. Or, like or the, the new old, one? The, no, 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 the old Bronco. The old, the old Bronco. one. Yeah, like all done up vintage-y. Yeah, without a roof on it, like we saw an Entourage. Yeah. Remember that one he was rolling in? That was like oh, when yeah. it went big. That's when it popped off, that Entourage thing, Mer. Speaking of that, what I was going to say is that I was shocked that R.A. and Biz didn't know who the Micro Machine man was the guy you remember them army or no i know what micro machines are i collected remember the guy that commercially would talk like to get this micro machine like i can't even do it how quick he was i don't remember that at all though no oh yeah he was wit remembered it i was right down our era so i was i was shocked when those guys didn't know that but that's a fun google youtube that is uh commercials micro machines micro machines the fast talker nuts and then of course um Hit us up with this G2 because we watched this, which is absolutely cool. Wait, was... here we go. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's the commercial. This is the Micro Machine Man presenting the most midget miniature motorcade of Micro Machines. Each one has dramatic details, terrific trims, stupendous styling, precision paint jobs, working wheels, Micro Machine cars, vast variety, including Lamborghini, Trans Am, Corvette, 4x4, Blazer, Pickup Charger, and many more. Micro Machine planes, polished, perfect precision, like F 15 Corsair Space Shuttle, P 51 Mustang, Micro Machine boats, a fabulous fleet of tugs, PTs, and speedboats. Talk about small. Micro Machines are less gargantuan than a grip. Hopper's midget is a marvel and smaller than a silver dollar. Hey, do you want to get more micro machines to add to our collection? Yeah! There you Galoob. go. Yep, that's From it. From Galoob. Is that even a Galoob. thing anymore? Galoob? Galoob? I don't know. I just remember I had to have them, though. I was I had to I have had everything. Too. If you yeah. have a micro machine, you were the shit back in the day, no <laughs> yeah. doubt. I don't remember that commercial, but that brings me back to Galoob. From Galoob. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that even a thing still? I don't even know. I forget where I was going to go. I, I was going to go with, because you brought up the stampede that is in Calgary. And yeah. The last part of the pod I just listened to, Biz denouncing his fandom for the Calgary Flames. Like, what is it that? So, like, that's his one of his biggest teams. And now he's out this quick. He shaved his he shaved his head. He shaved his head. <laughs> you know, riding this team, he put a giant cul-de-sac on his head. <laughs> Peter Mans Biz haircut, <laughs> and he's now off the Flames. He can't deal with them anymore. They are kind of frustrating <laughs> team. They're kind of like, what's going on there? What are they uh, missing? Like, what? What's happening? I don't get it. Like you've got Sutter, your coach. He's just maybe he's poking too hard every day. Is that draining you know, on the those boys? Old, those 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 old school coaches. They run their they run their course. We all know that it's good for a couple of years and then uh, get sick of it. But they made all those changes, which is tough too. You're trying to find the line chemistries and not good. Yeah, not good. It's a sad day. You know, rest in mm-hmm. peace, Biz and the Calgary <laughs> Flames. R.I.P. <laughs> to the to that you know, love fest that lasted a while. We got some good stuff out of that, didn't we, though? We got it. We got some great stuff. I just remember UG there in the playoffs, Battle of Alberta. Like, that was the that was peak wit biz Edmonton Calgary fandom, uh, and that moment will live forever. Murr, we should put some odds. You should start making some odds for which team biz will pick next to jump <laughs> on the bandwagon. That's a great idea. I'm thinking... I, I have a feeling. So he's Leafs. He's it, massive Leafs. But well, he'll, where, he'll, he'll always going? be Leafs and Yotes. Mm-hmm. He'll always have those. Yeah. But his third team, I wouldn't be shocked if he jumps on the Winnipeg Jets bandwagon with you. Oh, mm. we like the Jets. I, I've been a Jets guy. I jumped off it at the start of the year like an idiot. Oh my God, we should actually do that. Let's let's mm-hmm. transition now out of out of Chicklets chirps and get into a little twirl around the league right now. A little hot lap around the league. Yeah. You know, last episode we talked about trades we wanted to see today we're going to just talk about playoff bubble team who's in who's out and teams that we love um and, and it's it's great to bring that up the jets merles because we do we i mean i saw them i was between the benches guys i did a, between the benches games jets pens like uh i don't know a few weeks ago this team is a bunch of like just beasts like no one except for cole perfetti who's like a dangler and sam gagne who's like just over a thousand games now been around for is under like there's all they're the only small guys on the team everyone else is six four monster plus maybe morrissey he's he's not like huge but like he plays like he is hella buck and net what what do we not like about this team and and what do they have to do to get over uh, we love them merles we 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 were texting about them the other day they fell off near near the end here to the all-star break but like mm-hmm. What a what a team this team could be, right? Yeah, they, they turned it around last night. They scored four goals in the third period on the pathetic Blues. But I, I, in this team, like that rank is so hard to play in. It's a tiny, it's a little bit smaller than NHL size. It's going to be really hard to play there in the playoffs. And like you're talking about the size in a seven game like series, fifteen thousand people, but it's right on you. 
uh, and these big guys pounding you over seven games is going to be it's going to be tough on some of these other teams with the with the smaller guys and the faster guys. But yeah, the Jets look great right now. Hey, what a call though, G. What a call. Minus one and a half. He comes on. They're down. They battle back. They store, score two goals against the Blues in 21 seconds, and they're right in there. And then Shifley buries the empty netter for the minus one and a half. EBR celebrate. I was I was going nuts on socials for you, buddy. Yeah. I was going nuts. Oh, look at this. Here we, oh, go. There we go. Unveiling. He can't get yes. it up high enough. Yes. Get it, look, there it is. There it is. The good luck. I, I the couldn't get shirts. it over my barrel of a stomach. <laughs> That's what happened there. That's how bad it's been the past yeah. few weeks. You got. That's why I, I, I've been wanting like, to wear this. this game note shirt but i couldn't yeah. wear it last episode it didn't fit me but now i dropped the 10 pounds since boston so wow. got to check the game so notes good, now buddy. that must but, feel uh, so good you must be yeah. elite feeling well, legendary. i'm just gonna put it back on in florida like it's gonna come right back when i start boozing and eating steak and pasta it's, can't wait yeah we're all gonna just it, it's just a never-ending cycle Mur. <laughs> yeah. up and down up and yeah. down we go up and down we go <laughs> like like the penguins uh but i gotta ask gg i want to ask you about the bruins i want to just to get a quick taste of the bruins right now of course they're still in good you know in a good spot like not a big deal like you know they're still like the fun loving wagon but a little bit of a drop off here heading into the, in the All Star. They just kind of. I'm ooh. not worried one bit. They're no. down in Fort Lauderdale playing the Panthers. They're down in Tampa. You guys have gone out in Tampa. You guys have gone out in the strip in Lauderdale. We'll be there this weekend. The boys just had a little too much fun this weekend. They needed to get out of their system. They had to do it together before they all go their separate ways for the All Star break. But when they come back, I think everyone knows they had to get out of their system before the All Star break because they're buckling in for Bergey. For this final run, they're going to win the cup. Ooh, do you are you not no. concerned about a little bit of a let up like this? Like this is the no. thing that's going to that's going to get them. You know, they, they, you know, they've got great mojo, they've got great balance, they've got great production through the through the lineup. Um, but I think the mental part may be the part that's toughest. And sometimes the chemistry part, if it starts to slide, you try to find that identity. If if they if they can kind of start slipping, I mean, happened to Tampa. They got swept after like a historic season. Is that a concern for you at all? And just kind of seeing right now, I, I get what you're saying. Like, I know we're in the middle, but it's like, eh. I think they do need to get some depth because they've been pretty lucky this season with the injury bug. Like they have, I hope I didn't just fucking jinx them, but they've been pretty lucky this year injury wise. So I think injuries are inevitable. They're going to come, especially with the playoffs. So they need some depth defenseman. If, if a three, four defenseman goes down, they're screwed. You know what I mean? So I think, uh, yeah, if, if they can get a depth defenseman, if they can get a, you know, a depth, you know, top nine player, I think they're in a good position. I think the Jets need to do that too, speaking of them. But let's take a look now, boys. Good, good catch up on them, on the Bruins as they're the wagon slid a bit. We've seen some other teams sliding up here and brings us to some bubble teams in this league. And uh, Merles, where you're feeling in the East and the West right now, we'll get your guys' opinions on some of these teams, what to watch for, what you're interested in. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's funny. I thought we were going to beat the, the, the Chicklets' mothership to this topic, but they, they, they got on it on Tuesday, and they talked about who's getting in and who's getting out. I've had this written down for two weeks now. I had the Islanders, and, and, and to hear the news, they got Horvat now. So I still like the Islanders. Now they've added Horvat. I see them sneaking in and pushing out the Capitals that's in there right now. So that's that's my switch on of what the standings are as of today. Islanders sneak in. Capitals, like I said at the season preview, it's the end of the road. You're good on the pens right now, though? Yeah, well, I, I ride and die with Crosby, so yeah, I'm always going to have him that. in. They got to sort it out, though. They're struggling. But yeah, they're, and they're not I'm concerned. Pressing I'm concerned. Me. Yeah. Out West... Um, I got the wild sneaking in and, and, and knocking out like maybe like the flames will be there. Like we just talked how bad they are, but I see the flames and wild fighting for that final spot. And then the wild squeezing out the flames at the very end. Wow. You think, okay. Okay. I know that's a good call. I mean, I, I'll give it to you. That's a call. I, I, I don't see that at all. I see right now for me, I see in the West, I see Colorado's right at, at, in, at second wild card spot. They've been tearing right now. They're They've in. Been they're absolute, in. Yeah, I have they're, them they're, in. Oh, they're in. I got them. They're yeah. gonna they're gonna like surge and win their division. I think. I think oh. they're gonna make a massive push and win their division. 
Now, Busy called Horvat to Colorado, and he talked. He talked to Joe Sackick, right? He got that one where he, where they're going to try to get Horvat. Obviously, they fell out of the sweepstakes. I'm sure. I'm sure Joe Burnaby Joe was on it, um, but they've got to do something, right? And and what's going to happen, Landis Cog? But like their horses are back, they're rolling. They have that mojo again. They're going to push. We've seen veteran teams that know how to win do this. They kind of got through a tough patch of injuries, stayed stayed afloat. Boston did this earlier too. Um, stayed afloat, and now they're in a position where they're going to surge. I think they're going to push right to the top of the division, Merce. Well, yeah, let me give you a um, Barstool sports book. You can bet Avs to win the division plus 325, Army. So you're in a Barstool state. Let's put your money where your mouth is. I like um, that. Nine points back at Dallas, but three games in hand. Like you said, they're getting healthier. So you know, I'm an Avs guy. I'm the original number 29, if you didn't hear. Yeah. I, mean, I was 29, you know, when I played uh, four exhibition games for the Avs. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm an Avs guy out west, and I'll be in Arizona. Arizona's a barstool state. I might get in on the division bet by then. Do you, do you guys think Biz was pretty adamant on the last episode of Chicklets that they are 100% going to LTIR, the Kucherov special, uh, to land Landis Cog, Cog, so they can go out and trade for Sone at the deadline and, and then just load up for a playoff run? Think any way you think that happens? I, I could definitely see That's it happen. Why time. not? You know, Landeskog's a machine. He doesn't need to. He doesn't need the exhibition like warm up games before the playoffs. He'd be able to jump right in. He's he's built like a Swedish built, Viking. Yeah, he's built so, for playoffs too. Like yeah. that's just like put him in his element right there. LTIR. That's a long way away. It's not like he got hurt right now and then he's got to nurse it into the playoffs. You know, that'd be a different story. I I don't know if I could see him. Landis Cog signing up for that as a player would you sign up for that I don't know like you want to get in and you want to play I mean I think if you already got a cup it's like why play the second half of the season if you're Landis Cog <laughs> like what, 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 what do you have to prove yeah a veteran guy played a long time like yeah maybe maybe just you know dial back the miles mileage a bit right and and save it for when it when it really counts and when it really matters and in in the same breath helping your team with 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 the cap situation for them um okay you talked me into it. i could see it happening i could see it <laughs> happening and for and I, now i'm going to sw- switch the east for me and g will hear you after but um buffalo i'm nervous about buffalo the pens are up and down the second half is going to be huge you said washington you could see coming out i i, I I'm, I'm 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 buffalo is is kind of a high event uh, they got lots of guys that can hurt you. Uh, they can catch fire. We've seen them go on some runs where they string game. We've seen them go on some runs where they're not that good either. But they're kind of like a scary team that's on the rise right now, and they get a little bit of excitement, a little bit of energy down this stretch. Like I'm concerned in those wild card spots if you know some of these teams. Like for me, the Penguins don't start chopping some wood here. The second half of the season is so important, but Buffalo's scary. I think Buffalo. Yeah, what are they going to do? Buffalo looks great. They look great. Yeah, Penguins got to stop losing the teams like San Jose Sharks at home. Yeah. If otherwise, yeah, we are going to see Buffalo and the Islanders in over mm-hmm. both the old uh, classic teams. Ovi and Crosby will be out, which won't be good for anybody. I saw Yans, our boy Yans. Um, they were breaking down the Horvat trade the other night on uh, up in Sportsnet, and Yans was called upon to say, if, with this trade, if you think the Islanders are going to make the playoffs, he's like, nope, no, just simple, <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not riding them. So he doesn't think that trade's going to put him over the top, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how that kind of pans out. Also, uh, G, what you got? Honestly, so on Chicklets, I said for the wild card that I had um, Buffalo and the Islanders getting in, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. right away, of course, with every time I say something, just right down my throat, and he's like, "You have the Penguins and the Caps missing the playoffs," and instantly my head just. My yeah. brain went into a pretzel, and honestly, all night, I've been thinking about it. I'm like, what is going to happen in the East playoff situation? Do I want to rescind what I said on the show? And do, do I think, like, there's no way Crosby and Ovechkin both don't get in. So to be honest, I have no idea. I really have no clue what's going to happen in the East. I, I don't see Crosby and Ovechkin both not getting in, but I do see the Islanders or Buffalo getting in if that makes sense yeah well i i'll give you this too and i think this will be something to keep an eye on until march 3rd right boys the trade deadline uh it's already started now like a big a big horse just got traded into the metro uh so like you know caps pen some of these teams have to look at that and go oh boy 
You know, what are we going to do? We've been kind of like up and down, floundering a little bit. Is this enough to get the wheels turning? Are, are these teams going to now start, you know, is there going to be like an arms race in the Metro now, especially in those bubble positions? Uh, it's something to keep an eye on leading up to the deadline. Because I think the Pens, as they try to get healthy too, they're going to have to see what they are, see what they look like. You know, you've got Ruda out. They just got Latang back. They got Petrie back. They've got Jaris out and he'll be back after this all-star break. What does this team look like? Archibald's been out. He's a fourth line guy, but he leads the team in hits before he got hurt. They need that. I don't know. Like I think this kind of just advances the the like the speed of this trade deadline in the Metro, where a lot of teams think that you know if they're they're one player away from being a difference maker or having a run or what that could look like. So Lou Lamorello, like, boom, you got it going. The party is now started. Can I ask you guys, like, if you guys were in Buffalo, what would you do? Because th- that seems to be, like, the biggest question, really, heading into the trade deadline, at least for I me, know. is, like, you have a team that's, you know, really gone with the, like, draft and development thing, and they've, you know, built their core, and, you know, some people are saying, like, their main, you know, focus now should be re-signing Rasmus Dahlin, locking up Owen Power long-term, locking up these guys young-term, or... Do they risk some of these young assets, not guys like Power or any big names like that, but draft picks and high prospects to go get a rental guy to show the fans that they care? Personally, I mean, I I know Biz said the other thing, went the other way on the podcast this week, but I would stay the course. I don't think they need to mortgage the future right now. I think if you want to go get, you know, a, a bottom six guy for a, a low end draft pick, yeah, go do that. Uh, get some uh, defensive depth, fine. But I don't think they should be mortgaging the future, and I think they should stick with the plan they have, which is drafting and developing these guys. We gave you a cheat sheet for this last episode of Chicklets Game Notes. If you turn to page three of the game notes, we <laughs> gave you what Buffalo should do. Murr, what did we say they need to get? They need to get, get John Gibson. Yep, they got to get a goalie. And I, I think you got to go for it. They have a magic this year. And and there's no guarantee that next year they're going to be scoring like this. You see it all the time. Guys are up and down. It's not like it's – Tage Thompson's been unbelievable. He's – talk is unbelievable. But it's not like it's Sidney Crosby and Ovechkin that you have proven for 15 years that they're going to do this kind of scoring. They got something magical going this year. Go get a goalie. Go get a defensive defenseman. It's not going to cost you the future. It's not going to cost you too much. You have plenty of prospects. And what does John and, Gibson and go shot. for? What do you think Gibson goes for, guys? Some picks. Like they're they're going for Bedard, right? They, they don't need any more first rounders. Like you got two. You got two stud defensemen, right? You got and you got plenty of forwards that can score. You really don't need any more prospects. I know though. Buffalo needs it, man. The Bills. The Bills not let us down this year. They we, need we playoff need hockey. It. <laughs> oh yeah, they they got a good sports town. They need they need it. They've been so bad for so long. Like they're they're getting so close. Gee, you might be onto something. Stay the course. If they want a little bit pepper the pot a bit, little bit of pepper, little <laughs> fresh your pepper. Yeah, uh-huh. You uh, you go look at a, at a goalie and look at John Gibson, who's just rotting in Anaheim right now. <laughs> Poor guy. Poor guy. I, I just want to give John Gibson a hug when he comes mm-hmm. back to Pittsburgh in the summer. Mm-hmm. Get through it, Johnny. Johnny boy, you're gonna get through it. We're gonna make it, okay, bud. But either way, it's gonna be it's gonna be like it's so exciting now. Like every night yep. is, is a big game. Like I'm looking at the Islanders every night. Did they? Oh, they got the two points. Nice Pittsburgh. Oh my God, did they really? I went to bed at, after the first period the other night, and I wake up and they lost the game to the Sharks. Like oh, so oh I'm no, rooting for those God. teams. Like, I was between the benches, their boots on the ground, as geez. you call it, Merle. So I was just I like, would have left is, if I were you. Uh, I know. I, was, I couldn't that. get out of there. I was stuck in there. But <laughs> yeah, there, there's a little bubble coverage right there. A little things to look at trade deadline approaching a lot of excitement i didn't did i mention off the start of the show about groundhog day no you didn't i want to i want to talk about groundhog day today's groundhog day the release of the show is groundhog day um i want to talk about it because you know february 2nd what do you guys think of when you think of groundhog day uh, probably the movie I'd imagine. Yeah, I, I think of the movie, and I always would joke that like my life in hockey, like hockey life of a, a pro hockey player is Groundhog Day. You wake yep. up, you go to practice, you go to lunch, you eat pasta and chicken, you take a two-hour nap, you wake <laughs> up, you have coffee and a peanut butter sandwich or a bagel, you play your game, you go out after, you eat a steak and pasta, or you get on, like it's the same every day, and all of a sudden, eight months later, you're back home in the summer. Groundhog Day, every day. You're right, Merles. Well, that's a, like a great movie too, but um, in Punxsutawney, no more than an hour and a half from me here in Pittsburgh, driving, 
is the big festival with Punxsutawney Phil boys. Have you guys heard of this? Oh yeah. So G, G, G hasn't heard about it. So it, so G, this is a, and for everyone listening, this is a like celebration with Punxsutawney Phil and the inner circle, the members of the inner circle, they're wearing tuxedos. They have a top hats. They come out, they're holding up Phil. They're holding him like this and like parading him and a massive celebration of, you know, music. And I think they may have cleaned it up over the years because I think it was a giant gong show, like festival, like people boozing all through the night until the morning. <laughs> yeah, uh, see, I, I knew they did this. I just didn't know it was this like big gong show thing. I thought it was just like yeah. a private little ceremony. I didn't know it was like a big festival for, for Punxsutawney. Oh, it's massive, I guess. And I, I just started, got wind of it last year. I wanted to go last year. Um, but next year, I think we should go. I think we should like get biz to be like, you know, in the inner circle, the guy that's handling Phil. Um, and you go up to, to Gobbler's Knob is the name of where they keep Phil up on this like hill outside of Punxsutawney. If he doesn't see a shadow, spring will start. If he sees a shadow and goes in, you get six more weeks of winter. So this is like kind of the thing that's been running. And I think it's been going on since like, I think they started like 1886, this like groundhog club Punxsutawney Groundhog Hog Club um, and AJ Daru is Phil's handler I looked it up online but he's the guy that comes out and is like yeah like celebrating this guy to everything and it's like this massive party I think we should it'd be great for content it'd be fun as hell and if it's still like the gong show they have live bands and you stay up all night until the next morning when they unveil Phil to come out and like you know the whole thing around this uh, but it's like a three-day celebration, I think. I think it's just absolutely insane. So Groundhog Day today, the arrival of spring. Hopefully, uh, we get some good news from Punk's Tawny Phil. Merles, have you you heard about this? You're you're kind of in the in the vicinity a little bit where you grew up. Yeah, I, I've heard about it. I've never been there, but uh, you sound like you work for the Pennsylvania Tourism. You know, you're yeah. telling us how great Pittsburgh is yeah. now. The Punk's Tawny. Yeah, we'll get some sponsorships. Your, on your there. wife's from Wilkesbury. Yeah. Like, <laughs> your kid will be in the Little League World Series next thing you know down in Williamsport. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like a, I'm a salesman for uh, for Pennsylvania. Let's go. We got a lot of stuff happening here. So I, I think over the years, guys, uh, Merles, is there betting lines on this? Can we can we bet on what he does? I'll give you what it's happened so far. I, I've bet on a lot of things, but I haven't bet on. Does this guy see yet. a shadow or not? Punxsutawney <laughs> Phil odds. They've got to be brutal because he's seen his shadow 103 times and only 17 times from what I'm getting off of Wikipedia there's been early springs. So he's scared of a shadow more often than not. This is like rolling the roulette wheel when it's like black, 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 black. I've been there with Merle's where Merle's is like, oh, it's going to be red. It's going to be oh. red. You can't do it this many times in a row. <laughs> Let's take the underdog. Let's take the underdog. We want spring, boys. We want spring. Ooh. We want spring, we do, but I would like it's to coming. get a little bit more winter, boys, for my nice rink in my backyard. I haven't had anything. It's just, it's just been a grind. Yeah, so. ODR season's brutal oh. back there. My brother's rink, I think he's had two or three times total. Yeah, I've had two times on it, brutal, and one time my kid fell through it. So we're grinding right now. Come on, Phil, see your shadow. Punk's Tawny Phil, we're relying on you. So cheers to Groundhog Day, boys. What a movie, what a spot. We'll see you next year in Punxsutawney on, on, on Gobbler's Knob. We'll be up there. What a name. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Off of that, we're going to go to show at the Mindsies, one of my favorite segments. I love this, where we just kind of, you know, pick something out that we've seen uh, or that we've noticed or that we like for to be show and something that we, we're we not into is just send you to the Mindsies. All right, Mur, let's get started with you. What's what your show first? this month? Do all the shows first? Let's do show first. My show is being in, it's the All-Star All Star Break week here and our All-Star Break episode. The show is the All-Star Break when you don't make the All-Star game. Especially when you're in the minor leagues, the last thing you wanna do is be going and playing hockey for three more days instead of going on a guy's trip with 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 all the the rest of your team. I I remember we were in San Antonio. I was having a great season. Me and Joey Tanu both having great seasons. The All Star Game was in Binghamton, and if anyone's ever been to Binghamton, you don't want to go there. The rink is horrible. So I ended up not making the all-star team. Tanud had to go there. I went with like five guys from the team. We went up to Austin for three nights, shot the lights out. So all-star break when you don't make the all-star team is big time show. Oh man, I remember in the minors, boys, 
I went on a all star break. It was like my first one, and and Reed Simpson, just a beauty. Like, <laughs> oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and uh, Endo, he took you. The old he man took us to you South two Beach. down there. Yeah, he took us down there to South Beach. What a gong show! And and um, we went to like you know how they have all these like beach parties, like these like you got to wear all white and go to these things. It wasn't like super nice out, but I'm like wearing like billabong board shorts like and are like a hoodie like i'm from saskatoon i don't know what the hell i'm doing you know <laughs> everyone's decked out in white like sunglasses and just like so pro and fancy and i'm laying on this like day bed thing with like endo and like <laughs> simmer and uh, over next to us is like vince neal from motley crew i went over and said hi to him i got a picture and then uh paulie shore was there <laughs> <laughs> but a beauty i kept going to him with a weasel <laughs> Remember we did all that stuff? Uh, so I thought that was pretty funny. So you're right. You're winning. If you don't get in the All-Star game, you're winning. Instead, you could have been in, like, Manchester playing in well, I, I made the All AHL All-Star game one time. Not a big oh. deal. Um, it was in Grand Rapids, which, yeah, it's kind of dusty, too. But we had a great time. Uh, my friend Jeff Hamilton, he was – It was. remember oh, yeah. him in Bridgeport? He scored, like, Buddy, 80 goals. Buddy Tinted Visor, small guy, yep. absolute light show. So he hooked it up. He set us up as roommates out there. So we were together the whole time. Uh, another buddy of mine, Craig Darby, was there. So we shot the lights out. As I don't, That's a common theme, I guess, with me is uh, we're boozing. But you booze it up. It's okay. But Grand Rapids wasn't a great city. Yeah. I had two and one in the game. But you go to lost. the Bob. Remember the Bob? The Bob, Three exactly. That's where we were. we were at the Bob. It was back. I remember <laughs> it so clearly. It was back when, um, like, the Jaeger... Jaeger bombs that you would drop in the yeah, Red Bull. Yeah, yeah. Those those were big, and the Red Bulls, uh, yeah. vodka were big. So we were all banged up on that kind of stuff all weekend, <laughs> and then you got to go play a game. Yeah, you got to try to nurse your way. And then you got to travel game. back. Like it just it just sucks. Like it, it it's sucks way better going to, going to South game. Beach, Mer. South yeah. Beach, laying on day beds with Billabong shorts on yes. and the worst hoodie in the league, thinking you're high class society from. <laughs> Saskatoon mix of Saskatoon and Wilkesbury. That's that's so true though, so true. My show this uh, um, this episode is these e bug goalies. The Edmonton throws in this e bug. You know we've we've heard legendary stories. The guy comes in Chicago. The guy that beats the Leafs, the Zamboni guy. Then we got this, and then out of nowhere we got the guy that gets like just like courtesied into an NHL game uh, out of nowhere with two minutes left on the clock. And I want to make, I want to petition for Pittsburgh's e-bug. He's one of Sid's best buddies. His name's Mike Chason. He played like university hockey out east. Just a great guy. He's been almost in. You guys remember the Winter Classic game? He was dressed, ready to go. Jari was out. He was ready to go for that. And then, um, who are they playing a little while ago? They are playing the Florida Panthers. And both backups were, were out. Jari was out again. And... Uh, Spencer Knight was like sick, I think. He wasn't even on the bench or I don't know if he was ready to go or if he could go. So he was in like double team situation where he could have went again. Uh, I, 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 like, let's start a petition. Sid, I'm saying, Sid, get get Mike Chase on in a game. We need this e-bug. We need him in there. We need the tap. If we're starting to do the sympathy, put him in the game, give him the experience, put killer in the game, Mike Chase on. <laughs> I love it. What you got, G? Uh, I kind of I kind of went into this already, but I'm I'm calling any trainer in the tri-state area that can get me in shape. If you get me in shape, I'm calling you right up to the show. This, this will is be a, a double. Tough. This is how important it is. He's done it twice. It's going to be a difficult task, so you have to be good at your craft. If you can get me looking good by summertime, you are getting called up to the show, baby. Nice. I love it. I love it. That's desperation. That's sticking to the plan. I, I mean, I need that too. You need to go all in. I think Biz chirped some. Was it you? He chirped. He's like, you gotta, you gotta just go for it, man. Yeah. Like, what are you waiting for? And I'm like, yeah, I need that attitude too. Maybe a trainer can provide that for. I'm in. I'm in your boat with this big time. Big time, G. I know Merle's has dedicated himself. Hey, we'll hold each other accountable. Yeah. Let's hold each other accountable here. Going forward, I'm going to start texting you each week. Yeah. Be like, you go to the gym this week, and you hit me up too. Merle's, you too. Be yeah. like, you pussies go Let's to the gym it. this week. There, there's like a, there's an app. I was in it a couple of years ago with some buddies, and uh, you can do like a weight loss challenge. Like each morning, you got to take a snap of your picture, and, it, and, you, and you challenge. You each put like 50 bucks in the pot, and each week, whoever loses the most like weight percentage – like takes the pot home and it you was take pretty... a picture of your shirt off and everything in the mirror. No, no, every... no, the scale, like the scale. Oh, you so take your a weight. Of the scale. And it was a good way to like hold you accountable. Like, cause you're like, oh, damn it, I got to show this picture. And then it has like graphs of where you're gone and stuff. 
I'm, I'm skinny way. fat though. That's Me the issue too. where if I lose weight, like if I get in shape, I'm only losing three yeah, you're pounds. You're gaining weight. You're gonna uh, yeah, gain I'm weight. Gaining you're gonna have weight. muscle. I, I've been the same weight since I was 18 years old. Like I don't, yeah, I don't okay. really gain weight. I, it just goes to different parts of my body. <laughs> Um, like a bag um, of I got I, I got to get this going. I, like I challenge also like our, our community, Chicklets community. Let's stay on each other. Let's love each other. Mm-hmm. Let's get let's get each other in shape. Let's let's stick together. We're just a big team and a big oh, family, great. aren't we? Great. This is just what I need before we get to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, Everyone's exactly. gonna be coming up to me like rubbing my belly, being like, "Hit the gym, you fat <laughs> fuck. You're <Yeah>. disgusting." <laughs> you know what they're gonna do? Which is Give the worst because I'm fat now. Mm. They come and they pinch your belly. It's just like a massive grab of the belly. Like, oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. There's nothing that feels worse than that. You know, it's it's, it's brutal. Um, maybe we'll send that to the Mindsies, G, the, the, yeah. the belly rubs. You know, Belly maybe. rubs go to the Mindsies. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the Mindsies, you got something for us, Merles? I, I know I, you got yeah, something. This, this has been driving me nuts. I, I, oh. I want to know. I think it started last year. In the NHL, this is the National Hockey League. Why can't? The referees control the players on the faceoffs. They're all encroaching like inside the circles. Like, on the sides. In Europe, it's strict policy. You stand on the line, you don't go inside. If you go inside, it's gonna be a penalty. Mm-hmm. Watch the faceoffs tonight in the game. Even the opening draws, the guys are in there like it's like a might tournament. They're all over. Like, how do they not have any control? Guys, stay back, you stay back. Let's have a real face off. And part of that, and and because I had coaches that you're watching the hand. When the when the hand moves, that's when you jump. Not when the puck drop. Move when the hand. You can get that little cheating step. But these guys are just right in there. Like so so that little technique is gone from the game and just it drives me nuts that this is the National Hockey League and they can't control themselves in the face offs. So lineies to the mindsies, if you have no if you have no like you can't control yeah. anything, you're going to the mindsies. Wow, well, I feel bad. Maybe like the lineies are just See, getting chirped by these guys. Like, dude, shut up. I make eight million dollars a year. Go punt. <laughs> Yeah. I'll give you a hun- he give you a hundo. Let me crouch in here. Well, I've got to say this. Like, isn't that kind of like show a little bit though? Like, mm-hmm. like, hear me out on this. Like, when you're in the show, it's kind of show to be able to like do cool shit like that. Like, you can you're allowed to kind of like cheat in on the face offs, <laughs> like cheating a little bit, like this here and there, because because you're in the show, right? Like, you get a. It's kind of like lax comparatively to all these other leagues. Or like when you're a kid, it's like. There's not really like a true outline because you're in the show. You can do whatever you want kind of thing. It's like a little looser, right? Hey, without rules, there's chaos, as yeah, Kramer once said. Okay, I, I can get behind that. I can get behind that, Merles. <laughs> I um, understand what you're saying. I'm going to go with my mindsies. I'm going to go all the dorks in Vancouver, everybody. <laughs> I know it's been a slog there. I know. I know it's been mishandled, Boudreaux. <clears throat> I know the Tanner Pearson surgery. I get it. But when Ilya Mikheyev is crying because he gets shut down for the year because of his surgery on his knee, he blows his knee out. He's playing with a blown knee. This hap- this stuff happens all the time in the playoffs. This happens all the time through years. I did it. I blew my shoulder out. Can you damage any more? No. Can I play? Yeah, if you do this, this, and this, you can play. Okay, finish the year. Get surgery after. Ilya Mikheyev tried to do this. This guy hasn't tweeted in two years. He dusted off the Twitter machine <laughs> and comes in with like a perfect English tweet, which I respect saying how he handled his knee situation like he has to do that part of it's on the canucks i get it but like part of it's like are you kidding me canucks there's enough you got a guy that was in tears about his knee like get out of here you're going to the mindsies the whole thing's going to the mindsies send everyone to the mindsies am i offside with that like get the hell out of here no i agree man fuck that vancouver like fuck me it's been a long enough year it's been hard you just capped and just got traded Every, the wheels are falling off. Everyone's pets' heads are falling off. Like, we got to get Mikheyev coming on explaining his thing, like, because of, like, the fans are, like, all... It's always something with them. I don't understand the fans, why they got all, like, into this Boudreau thing. They're all feeling bad for a guy making two and a half million dollars. Like, who yeah. cares? Dude, that's, it's your job. You have to show up and coach. Do you think he never had a player he kept in limbo like that? Oh, I'm going to send you down. I might send you down. You're going to be a healthy scratch tonight. Like, this guy coached forever. He's making $2.5 million. You don't have to feel bad for him that he's in a weird spot like that. Is it right? No. Like, don't stop feeling bad. Like, I love you, Bruce signs. Like, you kidding me? Yeah. They feel bad for him because he had to sit there and do that, making two and a half sheets a year. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. What's those paychecks? Two and a half and... 
I and don't life know. I, only, I made 400000 when I was the NHL. Yeah, life in hockey for Boudreaux, I get it. A, a coach forever, I get it. Well-respected by his mm. players, I get it. Everyone was speaking out on it, but, you know, like, come on. Yeah. Come on. Hey, come on. Hey, hey come on. Come on. <laughs> for the mindsies here, I got, uh, I got all internet detectives. I've just, I've had it with these <laughs> internet detectives. These TikTok detectives is what I like to call them. It started with DeMar Hamlin. People were saying that DeMar, the, the, the Bills and the NFL put a body double in for DeMar Hamlin because he wasn't showing enough of his face at the Bills game. Just absolutely fucking crazy. So DeMar Hamlin then had to make basically a statement at the Bills facility, which is just a fucking joke that these people sit in their parents' basement all day just fucking trying to find, make build up these conspiracies, which leads me to my second thing, which is the Trevor Zegras lip reading. Like, what is going on where everyone just suddenly thinks, like, they, like, you you think you know what Trevor Zegras is saying by reading his lips on a four-second clip. So you're going to blast it out to your entire social media feed, to the entire world, that he said something about fucking Troy Stetcher's, poor Troy Stetcher's dead dad. Like, what are we talking about here? How How can anyone consciously sit there and and post something like that. It just, it blows my mind every week when I see these TikTok detectives built, <laughs> dive into these conspiracy theories and the Trevor Zegers thing. I mean, we've heard from people on the ice. He said nothing about his dad. Like this whole thing is just ridiculous. And it starts and ends with the TikTok detectives. Yeah. And it's like, it was kind of grainy, like it cut away. Then the linesman's head was in the way. And then all of a sudden, just like, it appears that like, they feel like he said that. And it's like pretty tough to just put that out there, right? Like, you know, that's a pretty aggressive thing to say that someone said. I, I don't know what he said. Obviously, yeah, Stetcher I know he pissed. didn't say that. I got confirmed that he didn't say that. If he said something like that, somebody would have heard it. Everybody's yeah. heard it. The linesman would have heard it. There would have, there would have been, it would have been over by now. The other team would have heard it. I don't know yeah. if we'll ever find out exactly what was said. I'm sure it was a pretty good chirp to, to go that nuts. Or he misheard it probably. I think that I think from from everything I've heard, yeah. it was a misheard funny chirp is mm -hmm. is what I was told <laughs> from from yeah. someone who was on the ice. So okay, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Everyone, yeah. all that stuff to the Mindsies. You heard our show, Mindsies. Merle's. <clears throat> Mindsies. One of my favorite mm -hmm. times of the show right now, guys. Uh, get a lot of feedback traction with this one. People love it. Uh, it's now time moving on to a fan favorite segment. It's Beer League Heroes. Uh, I'll recap our last ones and the rules. Number one, the shower sheriff, shower after the game. We came up with that. Merles is on a mission, and I am on a mission mm -hmm. to clean this league up. Uh, one rule at a time. Uh, rule number two, don't be, uh, don't be cheap with the beers. Bring enough Big Deal Brew, our presenting sponsor. Bring enough Big Deal Brew for everyone. Of course, we had the Beer League Variety Pack Swindler. Uh, <laughs> that was number two. Number three, no wheelie bags. Ken Reed. Brutal look on the internet. Works at Sportsnet, a buddy of mine. Showed up to like Hockey Day in Canada with a wheelie bag. Of course, he was put on blast on social media with his wheelie bag. That's got to go. And totally embarrassing, especially him. He's old school. Uh, and so now that brings us to rule number four, Merles. Yeah, um, I'd before love to that, this. I want to go back to number three. I've gotten a ton of messages. Is the wheelie bag okay if it's the oh, guy yeah. bringing the beer? Like, ah, uh, I, I don't think so. I, I know there's some rinks that don't allow you to bring beer. I've done it before. I've snuck the 30 pack in my bag and carried it in. Um, yeah, I, carried I, had it a, in. I, I had a guy, um, what was his name? He had a cart. They had this custom made cart that was passed down from generation. So you can carry your bag in, pull the cart, you know, that way to get the beer in. Like you said, the coolers, every cooler coolers now has wheels. wheels. Yeah. Like, do that. Just don't bring your your hockey bag on on the wheels. Yeah, we're done with that. Hey, yeah. don't be caught dead with that. Come on, come on. So but rule yeah. number four, Mer. I got to hear what we're, you got for us. What yeah. we kind of came up with. This is a really good one. This guy's despised on every team, and they're all the same. <laughs> yeah, it's rule rule number four. Uh, originally, I had this when we started this. I had it under iron lungs. You'd always chirp a guy like, "Oh, this guy's got iron lungs. He's out there all dime." But now I'm switching it to the Jack Hughes rule. Because as we know, he took the, the longest shift in NHL history 
seven and a half minutes or something wild like that, the one game. So it's don't take too long of shifts in the beer league. See, I, oh. I got to jump in here, and I, I just don't know if I d agree with this one, Merles, just, oh. just in the sense of – I half the time I don't even want to go out there when I'm in the beer leagues. I'm just I'm I'm gasping for air on the bench. I think you know of the two the eleven o'clock Tuesday night game. Six guys show up. You have one defenseman, and you need a guy to stay out there for six or seven minutes. I'm like, stay out, stay out, stay out. Okay, no, I, I'm, no, I'm, I'm talking more thing. when it's you have the ten guys or you have the three lines, and it's. You know, you stay with your line. Don't screw up the this line. Is the That's, guy. Fair. That's fair. This yeah, is the guy we hate. Yeah. There's the guy that everyone says, stay out there. We need a goal. Stay out there. Stay out there. We're short guys. Stay out there. You're you're good. There, I get it. That's me when I play beer league, right? We need a goal. <laughs> they say, Army, get out there. Army, you know, play forward. If I'm playing D, go get us one. Okay, okay, I can figure Murr, it out. Murr, that's you in the Chicklets Cup for us. Yeah. <laughs> that's Murr. He got to stay on the last five minutes. We need some kind of magic out of the out of some some someone that's special on the team. All right, not the guy that used to be good when he was nine that still thinks he's like a legend on his team and he's and everyone's paying the same amount of money Merles this is what we're saying right everyone's chipped in and this guy takes it upon himself to to bless himself as the best player in the league and the best player on the team and take five minute shifts the team on the bench is now going that guy's a fucking loser what's this guy doing get off the ice he does this all the time he thinks he's a legend because his wife's in the stands maybe or he's trying to impress somebody like buddy you're not good anymore you stink fall in line be the same you're fracturing the team you're pulling the team apart and they only now want you on the team Merle's probably because you, you chip in just enough that they can meet the dues they need one more guy that's just a team player and you got superhero Jack Hughes guy out there just mm -hmm. just battling through an eight minute shift because he's going to make a difference you can't you know come on that's the guy, right, Mark? If, if, yeah. if that's yeah. the case, if that's the guy, then I'm on your side. Now. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying, G. When you're short man, you do need the guy. Like, dude, somebody stay. I'm, I'm talking when you got the full lineup, recreational. Yeah, when, in more serious leagues, I like that army at last five minutes. Like, but your team will let you know you're the guy to go. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't call exactly. yourself that guy. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm the guy that gets to stay out. No, if no, you, no. If you They'll think you you're know. the guy that way, you're not the guy. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the guy, pal. You're not the guy. You're not that guy. Hey, start clicking the door. Click, 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 click. You're not the guy. Let's go. Iron lung. Done. I love that rule. I love that rule. Uh, way better camaraderie, not as much complaining behind guys' backs, and they're like, oh, fucking Timmy, he fucking, fucking stays on for four minutes. And, and like, you, you line up your team, and like, if you're in a bigger, like, you line up your lines, like, maybe you have your two strongest players at center with some weaker wingers, yeah. and, and, you, and you have it set up, so you need to keep the lines rolling. If this guy's staying out too long, say, I, I, like, I hate it when I'm out there, say I'm out there, and I, they have another good player with me to work with, but all of a sudden, I'm out there early than my winger. I've wasted all my energy. By the time my good winger gets out there, I got to change. You know what I mean? Yeah. It throws off the whole team. And yeah. just, just stay with your line until the end of the game when, when the other guys tell you to go out there a little extra. All right, there we have it. I love it, Merles. Great advice. Mm -hmm. One rule at a time, cleaning up the league's boys. Rule number four, iron lung, Jack Hughes rule. Don't take all the shifts. Don't take everyone's ice time. All right, you're not that guy. It's now time for riding the bus. Yeah where we get into all non-NHL happenings. We've got prospects, uh, we've got some leagues, we've got leading scorers, and, and, and we've got uh, NCAA chatter. Merles, you wanna get into that? Yeah, let's, uh, I wanna start with the prospects. You know, World Juniors is over, you're starting to hear more about these guys, the Connor Bedard and all this. Um, you know, the mothership chicklets, they don't have enough time to cover this draft stuff, so we're taking over that for them. Mm -hmm. I want to give you guys my top five, let, let, you know, let you guys think what you think of them. Number one, I got Bedard, obviously. Um, number two, I've talked enough about him, Leo Carlson from Orbro over here. Number three, I got Fantilli from Michigan University. They're number six in the country. He's second in the whole league and in, in the whole country in scoring, which is amazing. Um, the fourth guy that nobody talks about because he's playing in Russia, Mitchkov. He was playing in like the lower level. He got just got moved up to Sochi in the KHL, but they're awful. They don't. They've won one game in like three months. But Mark, he's doing I, good. Can I ask you a question yeah. about him? So yeah. Mitchkov, everything I've heard is he can't come 
in play in the United States until 2026 because of his KHL contract. Now, is that something that he's able to get out of? And and also, do you think that there's a chance that he could start to fall in the draft here as some other guys start to up their uh, value and people start to realize, look, we're not going to see this guy for three years. Hey, just get Merles as his, or get Witt as his agent. He'll just be over there sliding hundies like, hey, can you get out of this deal? Can you get out of this deal? Can yeah, it's going to take more deal? than a hundy to get him out of uh, it's, it's SKA, I think, has him signed that long. And it, and it would be close to like with Kaprizov, what happened with Kaprizov, because he didn't come over right away either because he fulfilled his contract there. Nowadays, you never know what's going on with Russia nowadays. But yeah, I think that will will maybe uh, scare away a few teams. But his talent is, is somebody's going to take a shot. A, a team, um, you know, that that's looking more down two or three years. They don't want to be good again next year. So it's almost perfect. You, you draft this guy, you bank him. You're bad again next year. You grab another guy. Then all it's kind of like Crosby, Malkin when they came over at the same time. Um, and my fifth one, a little off the board, I went with Axel Sandin Pelika. He, uh, he's a righty D man from Sweden, played in the world juniors. He's on Sheleftia. They're the best team over here. And most draft experts don't have him this high, but last year at the draft, you remember a lot of these D men got moved up. They went a lot higher and especially righties. Mm -hmm. Everyone's looking for that next Kale McCarr. Now everybody saw how valuable he is. You can play 30 minutes, offense, defense. It's a new game, the way the defense play. They're swirling through the zone yeah, and the everything. modern so game. Merrill's I think the there's going to be a team that doesn't need a forward, a team that needs a, a, a right-handed D-man, and I moved him up to fifth. What about, hold on, what about Zach Benson? I got a shout-out. Of course, we've got Bedard 1, Regina Pats. I, what about this Zach Benson? I mean, Winnipeg Ice. I would have had him probably fifth if I didn't go with my whole idea that somebody's going to want a D up there. Yeah, okay. And that's the only reason. But I hear great things about him. Yeah, good little player. He's nasty. Pretty good player. I got to give shout out to the Western League when I can as well. Uh, well, there's there's another guy. I got another guy just on his name. He's from Moose Jaw. Um, he's supposed to go pretty high. Brandon Jaeger. Jaeger, Saskatoon guy. Yeah, all right. Yes, I knew you'd I like him. I, another guy I know you would like uh, from Owen Sound, Colby Barlow. Let's go. I mean, how, how, how there, you might be the only Colby that's ever gone in the first round, so yeah, we might get a second one. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to bring up another American kid, Will Smith. I mean, like, what a name that is, Will Smith. Uh, he might US, be going to Miami. U.S. development team. Those kids are always end up being great. Um, Hughes, uh, this Hughes kid, that everyone's scoring a hundred points. A bet with Whitney and Pasha. He was the U.S. kid. Did his brothers both go there too? The U.S. program. Will Smith? No, he's from this U.S. program. But I'm just talking about how, like how good these players are coming out of there. Oh like yeah, Matthews, Hughes. I don't know if Cooley. all the brothers went there. Cooley, Cooley yeah. went there. He's now ripping it up NCAA style. But uh, are we going to do the draft, G? Is that a possibility? I should ask you that. Where is it this year? Nashville? Chicklets Game Notes can go do the draft if we, we should want do to. A, yeah, we, we definitely We should do a, can. Like a live stream or something or like be there I first would love to get boys. some boots on the ground down Can you there? get us on the floor of the draft, G? Oh, of course I can. Can <laughs> we get somewhere down in there? If I can't, Pasha can. <laughs> <laughs> Paj is like a ghost around there. He just hovers around. He's like Eric Carlson in the offensive zone. Now you see him, now you don't, right? That's unbelievable. Um, I want to ask about uh, some of this NCAA stuff, right, Merles? You said Michigan's yeah. number six. Where, where's Minnesota? G's boy, right? Cooley. Logan Cooley, Pittsburgh guy. I got to ask about this. I saw he scored like yeah. eight seconds in the game the other day last week. It was a highlight I saw on social media. He's lighting it up, too. What's this? What is he? A Minnesota? Where, yeah, how's he doing? Uh, the college is starting to get going now. Is your, your your exhibition kind of the non conference stuff is done? You're right into the conference schedule. Um, I was just looking it up. The top five in the country right now. You got number one Minnesota, number two Quinnipiac, number three Wits BU, number four Denver, and number five Saint Cloud State. Oh no, Bugsy. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, we know a bunch of those Saint Cloud guys. I don't know if they party like those guys do anymore, but. It's nice to see them up there in the top five. Ohio State, number seven, too, just sniffing around. That's near me here in Pennsylvania, Ohio State's team. Um, I find it hilarious, though, like looking at the top scorers, too, in this league, in NCAA, like there's a guy on there. I think he played in Erie. I actually skated with him in the summers. I've skated with Cooley, uh, his cousin Mooney. 
this kid's sick too. Yeah, I, know. John I coached Mooney. against him. 07. Yeah, seven. Yeah. Oh, he's a this guy's a little like he's unreal. Uh, we got and then the, and then I see on the scoring list Austin Swankler is a kid that I I skated with here also. That's you know ripping it up pretty good right now in NCAA scoring. Where is he? He's fourth um, from Bowling Green. So shout out to Austin Swankler. Give him some love. Uh, I name. think he, he played. He played. Yeah, he played. How does that even work? He played in the O. And then now he's at Bowling Green. Was it like a COVID thing? I don't know. I'm going to have to get to the bottom of this yeah, one. Yeah, they Do changed you know the rules since our time. Before, if, as soon as you went to an OHL training camp, you couldn't play college. But I know the rules have changed. I think you can sit out some games and, and get thrown right back in the mix in the in the college now. And COVID's changed everything with all the transfers and all that nonsense. So it's tough to, to track the guys. But there's some, some good players up in the front there. Um, Colin Graff, a freshman from Quinnipiac, he's tied for fifth. I don't know much about him, but for, to see these freshmen in the top five, Fantilli and this Graff, they yeah. must be amazing players. Yeah, Fantilli, is he is he's leading? Is he leading scoring? Yeah, I, think, I think after this weekend, he's one point behind this kid. Um, Ryan McAllister from Western Michigan, the Broncos. But yeah, the, the, the college hockey's awesome. It's getting down to it. We'll get into the NCAA tournament. Me and G, we, we've hit some we've hit some big bets on that before. Barstool Sportsbook always has the tournament odds, and uh, we'll get that going. When we're out in the, uh, we're actually when we're out in the Super Bowl next week, uh, I'm I'm hoping to swing by uh, Old Mullet Arena and and see Greg Powers with the ASU hockey team. Maybe do a little locker room tour, have a little chat with Greg Powers. How we uh, made that program go from an Acha team to now a uh, Division One team. So I think it's a super cool story at ASU. Yeah, that's I would love to go on that trip with you. We'll I would get too. Some vlog on it and check that out. Definitely. Oh, too. I'm trying to find out these leading scorers here. Luke Hughes is going to be a beast. Is he going to be the best Hughes? Let's talk about him, too. Like, Jesus. I really think so. I've been saying it for a while. I mean, he put up four bingos the other night. Like, this kid is incredible. And he's big. He's like Quinn Hughes, but he's bigger. I, it's just he's he's been so fun to watch this year at Michigan. At the World Juniors, he was awesome as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's a stud. Wow. Yeah, he is. He is. Four he's goals tall. as a D-man, that's ridiculous. He's big. He can skate. He can defend. He's kind of can do everything. He's like Quinn Hughes, but, like, bigger and maybe a little more stout, I would say, for, like, the modern era defenseman, too. Like, watch out for this guy. Holy smokes, New Jersey. Pasha is just like, oh, what's Pasha? Just, oh, I can't. <laughs> we can't even get into that, right? Pasha will be losing his mind, isn't it? So, sorry, Swankler's yeah. third in scoring right now. Uh, yeah, you're right behind Fantilli, who's a point behind McAllister, and and the and it's good to look at this for us too because gee, where are we going, Merles? Where are we going? We're going to Tampa Bay. We are going south again. Get to, we're gonna, we're going to be talking about the beach bodies again in April because we're going to the Frozen Four in Tampa, baby. Yeah, we are. I hope big, Cooley's in there. Big hope deal, Cooley. Brew. Big deal, Brew is sending us sending down us there too, the presenting sponsor here of, of Chicklets Game Notes today. Without Big Deal Brew, there's no Frozen Four. I need a Pittsburgh kid there. I need Cooley there. Thank you, Big Deal Brew. We're going to be down there. I can't wait to do it. Can't wait to check it out. Me and Merle's another trip. Yeah, down and to uh, it, let you know how it's set up, Army. I don't know if you follow it. but um, So there'll be two games on Thursday. That's how it's run for the last like 20 yeah. years. I, probably because I'm saying this, it'll change because I'm such a mush. But Thursday at like noon, there'll be a game. And then there's a three, four-hour break. And then there's the other game. So you get two games on Thursday. Friday's a completely off day. They'll hand out the Hobie Baker Award, and uh, you know we'll, we'll we'll sneak away to Ebor City, have some big deal brews, yeah. and then Saturday night is the championship game. So okay, perfect. It's that a great sets up weekend so and, great. That's going to be so awesome. Yeah, I hope we see some of these guys there, right? Like some of these guys we're talking about, some of these draft picks that we want to see too, leading up to the draft as well. We're going to be there on the draft floor setting up. Hopefully, G can pull some strings, get us down there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're going to be there. Frozen Four, uh, big deal, Brew. Thank you. That's going to be an awesome event to go to. I know it was in Pittsburgh a few years ago. I actually went to that uh, event, and, you know, fans travel in all over the place, college fans, and cheer on their team. I hope Cooley's there. I want Pittsburgh guy. Um, I want to see that. Honorable shout-out, honorable mention, Ty Voigt, too, still kicking around. He's second in OHL in scoring, a Pittsburgh kid as well. Merles, you kind of chirped, too, and they left him off the U.S. Uh, jun World Junior Team. Uh, he was leading the, the OHL in scoring at that time. But Pittsburgh, man, check it out. John Lucky Mooney. Hotbed. Here he is. Check the, it out. 
<laughs> Here he Check is, head of out. tourism for the state of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Colby Armstrong again. Can we get a Pennsylvania <laughs> tourism sponsor? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Just like a truck that says PA on the side with a Keystone picture or something. I don't know. I'll stick with the big deal brewing. All right, Merles. Um, what do we got here? You want to get in this? You want to get in this Vaspi situation with Zabinajad? Maybe yeah, Hershey. What's going on there? Yeah, we can talk a little. It's a little uh, interesting story. Brodeners. Kind of, I kind of made them a little known to the Chicklets Nation when I was eating the Zabinajad burger last year during the Rangers playoffs, and he was scoring. I was making props. Is it Zabanajad? I, I, is it Zabanajad? Zabanajad. Well, I'm. I. You don't ask me. You know. Yeah, me. I you're don't the know name, name. Butcher uh, guy. Zabanajad. <laughs> yeah, the butcher. Beignets is not in the All Star game co- anymore, so you, can, don't, you don't have to worry about that. But Zabanajad. I just wanted to get it straight because I can't trust you on names anymore. Zabanajad. <laughs> Um, Mika. I like to just call him Mika, yeah, so I don't yeah. have to say that. But you're right. The Mika so, burger you were getting, and it was a thing. Yeah, and uh, so that was fun. But he owns this. He's part of this group. I think it's four guys. They own his burger chain. There's 80 or 90 of them now in Sweden. It's, you know, it's like a, the pressed hamburger. And um, so they they wanted to sponsor this team. And there's a the 51... last thing I need to hear is about oh. cheeseburgers oh, no. and, and five guys, Skinny four guys. Guy. Skinny order it up guy. now. Put the order in. It'll be at your door when we're done. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm ordering now. <laughs> and so in Sweden, it's there's this 51 percent rule where the the club members, it's kind of like the community owns the team. They don't want it like the NHL or the English Premier League, where there's these rich owners coming in and making all the decisions. So with this 51 percent, they get to decide everything. If they want a coach to get fired, if they want a player to get fired, they, they can almost like decide everything. So this these, this Broner's kind of like snuck in in the middle of the night and held a meeting where they wow. couldn't get like the full board there. So they bought in and they bought up the entire like other 49%. And so now they have 49% and everybody's nervous that they have a couple guys on the inside already on inside the 51. So they're going to be able to win every vote now and and it's just if if this happens, it's going to throw off all the Swedish um, pro sports, this whole system they have here. So everybody's a little upset about it. I think Mika took some heat from it over here. Some teams ended their sponsorship with Brodeners because of wow. it. Wow, it's it's a weird story. It's a wild story, but I will still be going for the Mika Burger come playoff time. Rangers fans, don't worry. What's going to come of it, Merles? Is it is it shut down? Are they shutting down this purchase? No, I saw so he had this, a tweet. No, Mika had yeah. to tweet something yeah. out saying like, I don't know what's going on. I'm actually playing hockey right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like, what they're doing is they're in the lower. They're in like the third tier level, and they just want to pump money in, like get better players and move them up. They want to get up to the SHL at some point. So they're willing mm-hmm. to pump in all this money, get better players, and move them up. It, some of these old like Swedish people don't want change. They want to keep it the way it is. They have their club. They want control. So, but that's it's the way it is. Interesting like, little way over over yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, you want to make a, you want to make Division One. You want to make SHL. You don't want to be mm-hmm. all Sven skinning because you want to get up there because then you get all the money. But if these guys are already pumping money and helping you stay in Division One, how are you not seeing this? Yeah, it's it's wild. Holy. It's a wild story over here. But send those uh, guys to the mines, Yeah, exactly. Hey, send those guys right to the mines. I love that story. Um, you yeah. want to move on right now, Merles? Yeah. You want to move on to Barstool Sportsbook yeah. and uh, the score bet in Ontario? We'll get into some action that you're seeing. Cover, you know, sh- uh, recap some of the stuff that we did, whether it was a month ago or whether it was through the month. Mm-hmm. You're highly active, obviously. The EBR, Mister EBR Legend, sure. um, and what we're looking at EBR Game of the Month. Awesome. Armor play, we've got everything coming for you. And I got some questions for you too, just about gambling in general. I'd like to run by you. Well, I, I gotta pump our tires. We swept we swept the board again. We hit the EBR, Ferriestead. They won three nothing. It was it wasn't even really fun. It was just a no sweat winner for us. And then the armor, we hit our over. That Edmonton San Jose over, oh. I mean, w- w- I think it ended up Edmonton seven one. Did they San Jose get yep. one at the end? But that that was uh, that was a fun game to watch though. But we cash both bets again. Unbelievable. Um, do you want to get right into the picks right now and then do some questions? Yeah, yeah. Let's get into our picks. Let's get what we got. Let's give the people what they come for mm-hmm. with uh, with regards to yeah. Barstool Sportsbook and Scorebet Ontario. Merles, lay it down for us here. This is your specialty. I'm feeling pressure now. Going three and zero. I gotta go. Gotta get the four and zero. Sweden's been working for us. I'm staying in Sweden. 
Um, Sheleftia, who I talked about, this young prospect, they're the best team. They've won 15 straight games at home. Now, this is dropping Thursday. They play Thursday night at home, too, but I'm not going to touch that game. It's the Saturday game. Thursday, uh, Saturday, it's um, against Linchaping, who I, I fade it in my game of the week from the snowmobile video. You might remember it. <laughs> um, they're not very good. Their goalie's really good, but the rest of the team stinks. Sheleftia at home, three-way. Odds aren't out yet, but no matter what they are, we're hammering it. Sheleftia wins that game in a, in a laugher. I love it. I love it. You're the Swedish legend. You got to get up. People, you know, I, I think they know the program by now, G. You got to... You got to get up, get on, get on Merle's social right away, or Spit and Chicklets will, you know, check out that account as they retweet them and stuff, or you know, push it onto their stories with with Merle's picks because those games like start at like eleven o'clock in the morning, right? Oh, it can be nine a.m. Nine a.m. Yeah, sometimes you're space. tweeting those out at like six, I seven a.m. Yeah. You got to set that five forty-five <laughs> Mer EBR right. reminder if you want to get your bets in, if you want to get your winners in. Winners. Yeah, get your winners in, Merle's. Give it to us again. When is that? That is Saturday. It's going to be this Saturday. Um, I think it's an early game. I think it is going to be at nine fifteen a.m. We'll be down in Florida. I'll make sure. I'll make sure to have it out there Friday night for everybody that hasn't didn't get to watch in time. But I get a lot of those too. I'm, I'll, I'll tell them like, "Oh, it's on Game Notes. You got to listen to it to get it." Ah, oh, they got all every excuse in the world. Oh, I'm traveling. I'm at work. Just give me the pick. I don't want to listen. I'm like, no, you got to. Yeah, screw you. You got to click it's on game notes. You got like, to get through you know, it. You got to love us. You got to be a fan. There's people charging just... big money online for picks. You know, yeah. we're giving them away free. Just got to listen to it. Yeah, our, you can't just show. hang out with us and think we're going to hook up. Like, it's got to be a process. You've got to date us a little bit. And then, you know, you got to <laughs> hear all that we have to say. Merle's has lots of good stuff to say. Yeah. Right, Mer? Yep. Yep. So, and then, um, uh, armor, armor play. We got no NHL this weekend. No real oh, yeah. games. No, no overs because it's All Star weekend. And I, I love. I, we, we got together and talked, and I just absolutely love your reasoning behind uh, a, c- a couple of your picks. Well, I just think, you know, like All-Star Break, you talked about when you went to, like, Grand Rapids, and you're just, like, doing Jaeger bombs the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're called, Jaeger bombs. Jaeger bombs, yeah. and, um, you know, what, what this kind of entails and, and skills competition for these guys down there and everything. But we are looking at the rosters, and there's kind of a weird thing with the rosters now with, like, Bo Horvat now going to the Islanders. Of course, he made the All-Star game for Vancouver, and now he's going over. Uh, Beneers is out. I don't know. Did they replace... What, yeah, what's, Stevenson I, I, from Vegas. Stevenson from Vegas. So no one from from Seattle, which is weird. Maybe they'll have to pump someone else in there, like McCann or something. But now he's going over. Is he playing for the Islanders now? Have we got a ruling on this at all yet? Gee, have nope. anyone seen? Yeah, anything last thing on this? I saw, they didn't know what to do yet. Yeah, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. But looking at the Metro, they have like you know a bunch of Russians. When these Russians get together, they just they just hit up the vodkas hard. I think and like. I, 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 that's when I look at some of these teams, like the Metro, um, and that's why me and Merles, if, you're, if we're doing the armor uh, this week in the All-Star game, you have to take all this stuff into consideration because it is kind of a crazy weekend. Uh, and, and Merles, we, we like and we settled on the Central. Yeah, we, we got uh, the Central beating the Pacific in the first game. Yep. And and then we got the Atlantic beating the Metro just because they they're going to have too many Russians boozing down there. And I mean, I'm going to be down there. I, I I will be if I have to. I'll take some of them guys out. I'll, I will buy. I'll, I'll deliver the Pink Whitney to their room or the Big Deal Brew to their room to make sure this gets taken care of. And then, like I said, we we settled on the Central winning it all over the Atlantic in the finals. And I, I love your main reason on the Central. Yeah, the Central stacked. It's got to be. I look at I look at their I look at their players, and they're like exciting, good players. Obviously. Um, you know, looking down their lineup, I'm going, okay, I can get behind that. But then I look at their goaltending situation and it's Hellebuck and, and UC Soros, uh, just unbelievable goaltenders, uh, two guys that I can't believe are a tandem going for this team right now, which I put like right over the top uh, and why I'm leaning towards them taking it. So Central beats Pacific, Atlantic beats Metro, mark that down, and then in Central wins the final over the Atlantic. Merles, that's what we're going with. Uh, Armour's got three plays. We're 2-1 and one on the year. This While well, we sweep the board here, we're 5-1. I EBR like it. would be 4-0. Oh. We didn't There's just come up with these out of the, the air. 
Me and Merle's researched the schedule. Yeah. We looked who's playing who. We found, you know, all this stuff. We looked at players. We just used our brains to process <laughs> and came up with the best outcome for these. So I, I like that. I think we're going to hit it. People stay tuned. Do we have numbers on that at all? Or that's going to come out maybe in a few days here leading up to... Uh, all-star, keep yeah, your eyes the, posted the lines, for that. I, I keep looking. They haven't been updated, but they won't be far off. They'll be minus 110, yeah. minus 120. Unless they listen to us now on the show, yeah, they'll probably screw it. us and uh, change the lines, which we've done before so, in Europe with some of these teams. We'll tweet those out. Yeah. Merles will be on that, obviously. Mm-hmm. I'll be retweeting Merles, likely. Um, and uh, So stay tuned for that All-Star weekend. And you guys obviously going to be down there um which i'm looking forward to so another road trip for the old merman which brings us to uh boys trip story of the month merles uh last time it was showing up to a baseball game when the game was over because you were so bundled and destroyed on a trip it wasn't wasn't you it wasn't you it was another story uh sorry i shouldn't have said that make merles look like a complete uh clown show but uh Merle's, this story is with you, isn't it? Yeah, not? that's why I did. I, this one it does make me look like a clown. I didn't want to have both weeks be like me, but um, I was down. This was after a season, end of the season bender. You remember how that was when you played? Yeah. You just you go. You're with your team for seven nights. You just go hard, and then so then I go down to New York City to meet up with my all my buddies for for four or five nights, and it's one of those where New York City is just out of control with the nightclubs. So they're they're open way too late. We're all heroes doing the bottle service. So you're mixing your own drinks, just getting mangled. So we go out all night Thursday. Friday, we go out all day, all night. Sat the, this is where my problem started. Saturday morning, we woke up for the Yankee day game. And we just, we just no food, just right out to the stadium, boozing, sitting in that 100 degree heat. Not good. All right, Matt, maybe <laughs> Sunday, take care of yourself. Nope, Sunday, wake up. We were at the Gansevoort. You ever been there, Army? No. Uh, the Gansevoort's got this rooftop pool place is bar. Awesome. Place is great. So we we do a Sunday fun day there. We're jumping in the pool, bottle service. We think we're heroes. Um, Piss it in the pool. Wake up this. Wake up <laughs> Monday morning. Wake up Monday morning. I have uh, root canals scheduled back in Troy. Two and a half hour drive. So I'm panicking. Nine eight, and it's nine a.m. Like, oh my god, I gotta go. I gotta go right now. I gotta get there. I can't miss these root canals. I'm like, I can't believe I extended the trip. Sunday fun day. I'm an idiot. So I jump in my truck and I'm driving. And I get out on the West Side Highway. And I don't even know what's going on, but every car's passing me. I'm in the middle lane. I'm like, what is going on here? I look down. I'm going thirty miles per hour. And I'm afraid if I move or go faster, I'm like gonna have a heart attack and like die. <laughs> So I, I call one of my buddies and I tell him what's going on. And I'm like, he's like, dude, you got to pull over. He's like, pull over, park your car. Like, this is bad. So I pull over. I sit there. He's like, dude, j- just I'm going to call and cancel your appointment for you. Stop worrying about that. Go get a hotel. Just relax. So I'm like, all right. Leave my car up on the What a good know, friend. Yeah, Amazing The move. mix. The yeah. mix calls this mix, place for mix. me. And I leave my car on like 130th or something. I wave down a taxi. No Ubers back then. <laughs> And I'm going, I'm going, and I'm like, nope, don't feel good. Because I was trying to go all the way back to the Gansevoort, which is, uh, that's way down. And I make it to 76. I'm like, nope, I'm getting out. I see a day's hotel. I'm like, let me out. So I jump out of the cab. I go into the hotel. I'm staying in there. I get a room. I, like, I, I take a cold tub, a shower. I try to lay down. Nothing's really working. I think I dozed off maybe 20 minutes. It becomes around 7 p.m. And I'm like, oh, I feel pretty good. I'm gonna go get my car and bring it back to this day's hotel. So at least tomorrow morning when I wake up, I got an easy exit. So I go there, I take the taxi, I get to the car and I'm like, oh, I feel pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna drive home to Albany now. So I jump back in the truck, I jump back on the highway, everything's going great. I make it to Yonkers. I don't know, RG, what's that? 10 more minutes, 15 minutes from there? Yeah, probably 15 minutes. So, I, same thing happens, I like anxiety, like freaking out. I pull over again. I'll never forget, I'm in a Toys R Us, rest in peace, Toys R Us parking lot. I call I call a different buddy and I and I explain to him, he's like, dude, just go get a hotel. I'm like, fine, I'm just gonna get another hotel. So now I've been, this, I'm going for my third hotel of the day. I went from the Gansevoort to the day's hotel. I go get a red roof in. That was, a, cause that was right there. I didn't have a choice. I couldn't drive anywhere else. So I, I get a room at the red roof in. I, I, I stay there overnight, barely sleeping on and off. You know, the cold sweats from the vendor, like, just pathetic. Wake up the next day, I start my drive. 
And I'm telling you, Army, there's four or five uh, rest areas on the way to Albany on the New York State <laughs> yeah. Thruway. Every like 30 minutes, I had to pull over and I would like jump around, like slap my face, like drink water. Like it was an absolute disaster. It was. It took me close to 40 hours to get oh, home from New York City. Two and a half hours. So that, that's incredible. how you do a boys trip. Um, that's why you'll hear like there's another story of me in like Boston where I couldn't drive home is why I don't drive anymore to a boys trip. But, I just couldn't yeah. believe the levels of anxiety and like well, there's <laughs> no eating, rest. no sleep. I, I, Calling everyone, like you couldn't yeah. rest. You kept having to drive like a mile and get another. Yeah. Sorry hotel. if that went long, people, but it was it was a long couple days for me too. Oh my yeah. god, that just story just didn't quit though. It was just like <laughs> hilarious and like the position you were in to try to get home. Double hotel room, multiple calls to friends to figure it out. <laughs> Can't drive <laughs> for a two and a half hour drive. Yep. Oh my God, what a spot you must have been in. That made me cry, Merles. Thank you for that. Yep. Amazing story. I hope the next trip you guys are on here to the All-Star game uh, is a lot smoother. We don't inter <laughs> yeah. come in. Yeah, I, learned, I learned my lesson. You got to yeah. eat, you got to drink water, you got to sleep. Get some sun, boys. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the All-Star game. Uh, maybe G get some headway with the draft for us on the draft floor with Gary. I know you talked to him a little bit here and there. Mm. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, enjoy the festivities. Mm. What what what's it again? You want to you want to drop it again? I know you guys did it on on spit and chicklets, but game notes. Give it to yeah. The we'll be again. at Bo's Pub uh, from twelve thirty to two before the game on Saturday in Fort Lauderdale. So come by, have some pink Whitney shots with us. Mm. It's going to be a blast. And uh, hold me accountable. Call me a fat, ugly piece of shit. <laughs> so I hit the gym and uh, gee, let's it, get some let's get some beach runs in while we're down there. I'm in. Oh, that, that's what I, I always say. You guys will be like problems. Rocky Balboa and. Uh, uh, when they were training. <laughs> yeah. At what point like, do we have one, time to do yeah. beach runs on these yeah, fucking trips? We, I don't know. We got to get up early, but it's so much easier in the warm weather when you can just like go right outside your door. We're in these it's cold true. weather places. It's a lot tougher. So oh, don't let Biz there. make you feel guilty, G. He's out in Arizona where it's warm and it's easy to work out. Yeah, I agree. But. Let's stick together, though, boys. Uh, our next episode of Chicklets Game Notes will be when? Uh, March 2nd. March 2nd. So stay tuned for that. We got some time off. Stay tuned to the boys. You guys are banking some epic interviews that will be going on at the All-Star Game as well. Merles, travel safe. A uh, long way to go. Anything else to add before we go, Merles? No, I'll probably be I'll probably be putting some pics out and some videos along the way. Yep. It's, it's, a, it's a tough trip, but... It, it's all worth it once we get boots on the ground in Fort Lauderdale and see all these guys. The boys will be there ripping it up. Tarps off. Ta tarps <laughs> optional, as they say, I imagine. G, keep your tarp on. Uh, enjoy the trip. Enjoy the All-Star festivities. Looking forward to catching all of it. And uh, enjoy fans. Enjoy interacting with these guys uh, when they're down there. We're going to shut her down right now. This has been Episode 4. Uh, brought to you by Big Deal Brewing. Thank you. Tip a couple cold ones back. Uh, down in South Florida, boys, uh, in Fort Lauderdale, hit the beach. All right, thanks, everybody. Enjoy. Enjoy.